Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Breaking the Code. My name is Tim. This guy over here is Sal the Slab Guy. The guy fixing himself to look presentable is Uncle Gary. And right next to him is Archduke Kevy. Tonight, I get dressed again. That's right. 31 <laughs> seconds. That's all it takes uh, to be super awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's episode, we are going to talk about why we collect. And we have got a lot to go into about that so please get comfortable and get ready to listen to some awesome history from the four of us here right here at the codex station and speaking of that we're going to get about a minute and a half worth of business out of the way and then sal is going to get us started on why we collect i drew this drew the short straw tonight wow uh, there you go uh so ladies and gentlemen make sure to find us on the codex station.com go there to get some merch meet the team and so much more everything is there for you it's your one-stop shop for all things codex and you can also head right on over to your favorite social media platform and type in at the codex station and that is where you will find us make sure to hit the like share subscribe and follow so you don't miss any more of this content all the time every time also that neat little qr code we got right there uh you can go ahead and use your smarty smartphone and scan that awesomeness so that way you can get exclusive content only available to patreon members for the price of a cup of coffee if you so please sal when you are not on the codex station where can people find you well you can always find me on youtube under sal's comic corner and also under instagram as the slab guy 77. that is amazing uh kevin you are on facebook when you're not here on codex what is that i'm on facebook and instagram thank you very much there you uh, go i created a group over on facebook and instagram called comic character of the day where we post the different character uh thanks to gary a different cover and all sorts of other goodies and news regarding this geekery that we all uh, know and love called comic book collecting which we'll get into more specifics of soon there tonight. we go all right you know, no. And Uncle Gary, let everybody know when you're not here on Codex, where can they find you? I am all, I am on Facebook. Or you may see me under the name Opie Taylor. And I do post the cover of the day for, for Kevin's wonderful site there and um, for character of the day. And sometimes we correspond and match the same character. Sometimes we don't, you know, it's far, but it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful. And, you know, part of this love we have for comics is I'm trying to introduce the folks to covers that, they may have never seen before so that's that's a pleasure of mine um i'm also the co-owner of comic logic uh, one of the co-owners and we are in ashburn virginia and we uh we're the only comic store in loudon county virginia so if you're in northern virginia come see us and i'm also a member of the grumpy old nerds and we do a facebook um live show on tuesday i mean i'm sorry on the second and third Thursday of every month. So if you want to see shenanigans, see us go off the rails, it's just three of us sitting there in the same room talking and, and bullshitting and uh, spouting nonsense. So that's what we do best. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's the name of that restaurant that you like to go to, Farva? Shenanigans? Oh, uh, anyway. <laughs> shenanigans. All right. Let's let's shenanigans on that. We right. have shenanigans. In, in, I don't in, want in, a in, liter of soda. If you say that <laughs> one more time, I'll pistol with the next guy that says it. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, why we collect, that I think is the ultimate question, right? Why do you do it? Why do we get into, as Kevin says it, this geekery that we all know and love? Sal, start us off, man. What is the reason? Oh, my God. I, that's that's a really good question, but I, I, I'm going to be honest with you and it'll probably reveal some geeky nerdness of me but i do it. really identified with spider-man and it, the you know being a being a nerd not having a good you know girlfriend type of situation always down on his luck it, i just kind of felt a connection with uh peter parker let's put it that way so spider-man was my number one uh my number two would be green lantern hal jordan and the fact that the, the, he using his, his imagination to create anything he mm -hmm. wanted, you know, to, to, to win the battle or whatever. And it that just, I don't know, that just blew my mind. You could just think of anything and you could create that construct, you know. Right. So that kind of just like expanded my imagination like tenfold. And um, 
Yeah. Th so right off the bat, those two things right away. The third thing I'm going to say is the first really X-Men book I read was X-Men 133. And it wasn't even mine. It was my friend's. And, and every time I was, we would, you know, we would hang out and we're at his house. I was reading that book. I mean, I would probably, you know, quote that book to you now, word for word. And, and that book is probably lost in the wind now or gone. But I luckily have a copy of it now slabbed. And I'm very happy to own that one. Um, that book made so, Wolverine a star. Yeah. Yep. Where is he? Yep. 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 And he's just, he's just tearing through all the, all the uh, hired help and, and stuff like that. It's great. Yep. You know. He out bluffs on, uh, one of the guards as well. It's, you know, it's signature moves from, from Wolverine all around. Ooh, but nice. the, the fact that, you know, you saw the team captured completely, yeah. completely down. And for like a second, they're back on their feet, back in the fight and winning. You know, that type of situation. That was just a, just an awesome story standalone by itself. That issue just alone was amazing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um that kind of like introduced me to the X-Men and I think Nightcrawler was probably my favorite for his swashbuckling attitude mm -hmm. after that. You know, I just enjoyed his, you know, the, the, the swashbuckling, the, the outgoing right. attitude that he had. Just and I enjoyed the beat. that. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed that of him and that's what really pulled me into the X-Men as well. Um, mm -hmm. The first books that I ever got, Oh, my dog wants to go out. Okay. Goodbye. Um, so do I. The, the, <laughs> right, I know. the first book they ever got was at a, a fair, a fair in Montgomery County, Montgomery County Agricultural Fair, or whatever. And I don't even remember if these were coming from a, a comic book store or what have you. But there was people handing out these books, and it was a Marvel team up, team up between Iron Man and Spider Man. Mm -hmm. So that was my mm -hmm. first introduction of Iron, getting um, Iron Man called Shellhead, which I thought was pretty mm, funny. Thanks. You know, and and the other one was the that Avengers. Um, Oh, uh, Gary, you know this one. The Avengers where Grim Reaper is, is uh, doing a trial of Wonder Man and uh, well, Adventure 160. Vision. Tim and I talked yes. about this tonight. That's one of my yeah. favorite. Yeah. Avengers 160. Yep. Yeah. Well, so Gary, I think that solidifies the book you're going to do for uh, the coding panels. Coding panels right there. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so the, the, that was Sal, my first Sal, that's probably my favorite single issue of Avengers. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that kind of that kind of brought my uh, uh, horizons to the Avengers and and Wonder Man in particular because I probably never even heard of Wonder Man. You know, everybody's heard of the Avengers. You always got the Avengers. You always heard of, you know, yeah. but you never really knew all the deeper characters. And Wonder Man was one of them. So that's kind of that that okay. right there opened my mind to the Avengers as well. So Wonder Man is like my favorite character. Mm -hmm. My favorite Marvel character is Wonder Man. Boom. Yep. Boom. This so so now such an I'm, underrated, underused character. Yeah. Very true. Very true. So now I really like, for the most part, I do like all the stories, you know, except for, you know, maybe a few people. We won't mention any names on here. Amazing Spider-Man number 25. <laughs> but we won't have any names. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but I really enjoy the artwork. I mean, I really enjoy the covers, and I really love displaying them like I have, as you can see behind me. Mm -hmm. um, Alex yeah. Ross, any classic cover like this Iron Man with the demon in the bottle yeah that it's just mm, very epic i want to say and yeah. it, it's just for something that screams to me it needs to be displayed like you mm. go to an art museum you're seeing fine art you're like you know mona lisa whatever have you and it's like yeah that's amazing i love that i feel the same way with these mm -hmm. you know and, and that's why i have them up on display mm. okay all right, Sal, that is awesome to hear why you yeah. collect comic books. I know we are just at the tip of the iceberg with that, so mm -hmm. we'll get a little bit deeper as we go on. But if you guys don't mind, I'd like to go ahead and go second and dive into that a little bit. So the reason why I collect is, uh, Sal, I, I, I think a lot of us, kind of fall into that that same thing you know like you said in the beginning right we were a bunch of nerds we were a bunch of geeks we didn't we weren't as popular with the ladies as a bunch of other people we didn't were. Fit in. yeah exactly that yeah to to broaden it out we didn't fit in right. and uh, the place we did fit in was inside these stories uh and yeah. i can remember uh uh gary you have given me a lot of inspiration to show genesis books and uh, these are not my originals, <laughs> obviously, but uh, they're they're copies of books that are significant in my journey through comic book mm. history. So 
when I was younger, and I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. When I was younger, uh, uh, when I was 12 years old, my mom and my grandmother went yard sale shopping. And uh, we were at my grandma's house. And when she came back, she handed me a brown paper sack filled with comic books. There was like seven or eight of them in there. And she goes, here, I got these for you. I was like, okay. I'd never read a comic book before a day in my life. But I remember most of what was in there. Uh, there was a phantom issue. This was from... From the late 80s to early early 90s uh and i was 12 years old in 91 so uh yeah right yeah 91 i believe but anyways uh there was an old phantom issue in there when dc was doing it and and i read that there was a specter issue so that's where mm -hmm. i got into the specter but then there was this and i have loved this book pretty much since the moment I looked at the cover, and that is a uh, Hot Comics Chrome number one. This is early Kelly hmm. Jones work. Yeah, this is visual storytelling, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this this is absolutely amazing. It's only three issues, and at the end of the third issue, you can see like they give you the preview of what's coming next. You can see the cover for issue four. But Hot Comics went out of business before issue four could come out, so you hmm. never get to see any more of it there's only three issues that are out for this and it's so wonderful it's it's mm. about an astronaut uh, a russian and an american astronaut that went up in space together you know th this was during the height of the cold war and they had come up with this liquid chrome type suit mm. accident happens they crash land one of the astronauts survives you don't know who it is but this suit is stuck on them and it's amazing it's wonderful mm. Yeah, uh, Tim. And, I want to Tim that. I want to tell you what's really cool about that to me. I've seen a lot of comics. I have never heard of that title. I have never mm -hmm. seen that issue. So I find that really amazing that that's yeah. one of your Genesis books. And and I've never heard of it or seen it. And it's not fantastic. a whole lot of people have. This is like yeah, some that they're like, what is mm -hmm. that? Yeah, this, I haven't heard of it either. This was back in the 80s when the, a lot of independent titles mm -hmm. were spouting around all over the place. A lot mm -hmm. of great artists and writers and inkers and etc. got their start in these type of books. This is where they got their feet wet. If you can ever find it, you can find them in the dollar bins or the 50 cent bins. They're usually mm -hmm. beat up, but uh, it's, it's worth getting just to look at what's inside in the cover and to know that, hey, this was one of the books that got Tim started. Another one, and we've talked about this several times, is, uh, and I have friends that don't like this issue. I love it. I think it's one of the greatest X-Men stories ever. Uh, and mm. that's Uncanny X-Men. Yes. Oh, God. I love that one. I love it. It's so good. There's this one part in there, and, and as a 12-year-old kid reading this, not knowing anything about these characters, when they're inside that dimension in the palace and all that stuff going after mm -hmm. this item that this guy wants this is his first and only appearance by the way right. uh storm and wolverine are standing next to each other and they are like the two hardened fighters of the x-men at this time they both look at each other uh storm says something along the lines of well we got to go in there and wolverine and storm kiss right and it's a hard kiss mm -hmm. too and wolverine's like doll if we have to die today today's as good a day as any and he takes off and that is just so mind-blowing to me i was like what is about to happen here and the whole story is just so fantastic you could absolutely tell that the author was that was that claremont, claremont. yeah absolutely you, yeah. you knew you, you you read that it's like the, when i read that yeah. uh, i wasn't paying attention to uh writers but I was yeah. like, whoever wrote this is a big fan of Wolverine. Yeah, and uh, Alan Davis did the artwork. Oh, yeah. So oh, that that too. Nice. But uh, the other books, and uh, Uncle wow. Gary, you and I talked about this before everybody else got on. But uh, the other two books that are big in my history, my backstory, so to speak, uh, are the your origin in my origin <laughs> are the two books that I bought with my own money. This was like a year later or something like that. Not too long, or maybe even in the same year, but my mom gave me uh, $2 and we were in a small town called Baldwin, Michigan for all my friends in Baldwin. Hey, how's it going? Um, but you'll know Jones ice cream. It was a old ice cream uh, shop 
and uh, they had the whole bar from the 50s, mm. <coughs> excuse me, and all of that stuff. And it looked amazing. It was like walking into a time capsule. Mm. And they had a spinner rack of new comic books. And the two that I got for $2 was Fantastic Four number 356. Uncle Gary, who mm. is that guy? That's Puppet Master, baby. That would be oh. the Puppet Master. And then you've got the new heroes, uh, Marvel Boy from New Warriors, taking Alicia. And uh, everybody is kind of upset about that. So I got this, uh, and then I got this. And this is a copy of it, obviously, but I had to get it graded. Huh. And this is Amazing Spider-Man number 351. This is why I oh, always yeah. say, is that Bagley art? Because yes. I'm this guy <laughs> right here. And, and what's that grade again? Uh, 9.8, <laughs> good sir. 9.8. Yeah, so there you go. That's there's there's the history so of... There's the history of why I say is that Bagley art? It's because it's uh, right here. This book is that the uh, is that the uh, beginning of him going cosmic? Uh, no. So this uh. is the first issue where Bagley becomes the official artist for mm. Amazing Spider-Man, okay, so and then this right. starts a long run of him doing Spider-Man work. He was the artist of the '90s, and mm. the the thing says. Uh, the Tri Sentinels back, and this time, Kevin Spidey doesn't have cosmic powers. Oh, okay, all right, there you right. go. Also, guest starring Nova of the New Warriors. Ah, oh, love Nova. So, so yeah. I, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, if I remember right, the um, cosmic Spider Man started in Spectacular Spider Man 158. Yep, and that was when uh, uh, Buscema, I believe, was doing the artwork in Spectacular, mm -hmm. and Eric yep. Larson was doing the work in oh, amazing. Yeah, Eric Larson. But my uh, name's Dick Sal Sal yeah. in this area. Sal's still living. Sal Buscema is still living. Nice. And he lives not too far from here. So nice. kind of, you know. Gonna have I would to love to meet him. To him. Seriously. But to uh to to kind of sum it up, uh it's because of those books right there. Those books gave me a taste, a taste of the world of comic books and the stories that are so involved and stories that make you love characters and stories that make you hate characters, the writing and the artwork, the inks, the colors, the letters, all of it. And it's, it's just mm -hmm. so wonderful. I collect because uh, Sal, like you, I love the artwork. I love to showcase it. I love to display it. I love to, preserve books that have sentimental value to me mm -hmm. uh i love to preserve books that have monetary value but most mm -hmm. of all i like to have all of these right here that i can dig in and grab at any time uh like that right there right that's a yeah. random mm -hmm. so uh that was a random Come that, on. that was that random here's oh another God. random one what that's is this easy. holy we crap we'll go with Oh, oh my God. There we go. Uh, but wow. yeah, so it, just to have these books here and to have them available to me and to know that this is something that I am incredibly passionate about. And if mm. anybody's like, oh, yeah, I know Spider-Man, please tell me what you know. I would love to hear it so I can have a conversation with you about mm. everything that I know. And and I, I never gatekeep. I never say like, like some people do. They're like, you're so you're wearing a. Nirvana shirt named three songs by Nirvana that aren't famous. Psh, screw that. Oh, you're wearing a Spider-Man shirt? That's awesome. How did you get into Spider-Man? Tell me about it. He's my favorite mm. character. Is he your favorite character? Awesome. We have something in common. Let's talk about it. I'm ready to go. So, yeah, that's why Yeah, that's why I love collecting. That's why I collect. Uh, Uncle Gary, why don't you go ahead and let us know, and then, Kevin, you will round us out before we all talk sure. about it together. Sure. All right. Well, I first started collecting in um, February of 1974. I was nine and a half years old. And my grandfather took me to a 7-Eleven. And, you know, it, one, some of my most precious memories are going to 7-Eleven with him because you get a you get a soda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd get a, you know, like a hostess fruit pie or cupcake, maybe candy bar. And then comics. And so the first book I ever got was this beauty here, Justice League of America, mm -hmm. um, 111. This is my Genesis book. 
It's beat mm. to hell. This book in this condition is not worth a damn thing, but it's one of the corner. It's the cornerstone of my collection, and wow. this started it. And you know, just for comparison, here's a here's one that is beautiful. You know, mm -hmm. so that's what mm -hmm. that's how much this was well loved. So these hundred pagers, I'm nostalgic for them because that those were the first ones I got, and I know at one point I think I had like nine of them, and I remember I had like this bag that onions came in, you know, it was kind of a, like a drawstring and mm -hmm. like crisscross rope. I would mm -hmm. carry them all in that all over the place and take them everywhere and read them and reread them. And they had the um, they had the the um, the reprints in there, stories from the '40s, the '50s, the '60s. And I would get, I, I soaked up all this knowledge of all these older um, stories and characters like the Justice Society, which I fell in love with, you know, after the Justice League, they're my greatest comic yeah. love. And I got that knowledge from reading those books. Um, unlike, you know, when I first start, you know, so, so I'm, I'm going to go deep here. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first started reading the comics, they were important to me because I needed a world where the good guys won. Mm. I had, you know, my childhood was not ideal. Um, I was raised by my mom, single mom. I don't have any brothers or sisters, hardly any family. Um, my, uh, I had loving grandparents that I had and, and my mom's all I had. And then my father was a really bad dude he's a bad guy I and mean, my, my mother and he divorced when i was five she got out of there before he killed her um he had he had almost choked her to death twice he was an alcoholic um piece of crap misogynistic and actually the woman after my mother that he was with he killed her so and my father's <laughs> dead so i needed i needed um i needed a world where the good guys won i was in military school um, my mom was trying to raise me. I was put in military school, not because of behavioral issues, but just be, because she didn't have anybody qualified to help watch me during the day while she worked. Mm -hmm. And so that school gave me a lot of self-reliance, and that mm -hmm. was great. But but this was a world where I needed a world of heroes. Mm -hmm. and these heroes became my friend in a lot of ways. You know, they they became they became somebody I could count on, somebody I could look up to. I had no <laughs> except for my grandfather. I had no positive ma male role models in my life, you know, and but you know I learned to rely on myself in military school, and these comics were just an important part of my DNA. And like I said, it, it, they became friends to me, and it, it was just very inter integral to my my makeup. And as I got older, I mean, I was nine and a half then. So what's really cool is next February will be my 50th anniversary collecting which is fantastic or phenomenal, right? Yeah. So um, I, I'm really going to celebrate that. But as I got older, I wasn't, you know, I know you got, you fellas had said, you know, you had the, the nerd, you're part of the nerd culture right there, when it wasn't cool, right? It wasn't cool, and I was before yeah. you. So it was even less cool. Mm -hmm. But because I played ball, because I was a bigger guy, I never got shoehorned as a nerd on it you know mm -hmm. what i mean i would go into the comic shops and it's kind of funny when i would go into the comic shops y'all felt a sense of belonging right mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i didn't always belong so much because i wasn't like the other comic readers you know what i'm saying yeah. so because i didn't fit the mold you know because yeah. here's a guy he's kind of popular he's a, he's a big guy he, he walks his own path and if the, the girl comes in the store goddamn right i'm talking to her <laughs> you know, right? So I'm talking to her, and I had friends. I had friends that go, "God, in the '80s, you were into comics. How the hell did you get girls? And you were into comics. It wasn't cool then." I was like, "Dude, I never led with, hey, I like comics. I'm like, yeah, I'm on the team. I play. You want to go out? Let's have a good time. And then after you, after you have some dates and have a good time, she didn't care what the hell you're into. So right? that's that that that's that's why um that's why I, I got into comics and. That's why it, it it sustained me, and I um I I needed it, and you know, comics and football probably saved my life in a lot of ways, right? Mm. Because comics gave me the family I didn't have, and football allowed me to um partake in the violence I needed, um mm. you know because 
what I could do between those lines to people, you'd get arrested for doing. You know, <laughs> you, you could get arrested for, for in, in public for, for doing those things. So I needed that release and that outlet. And the three comics and football, they're really integral. I mean, and you know what? I, I wouldn't have traded any for the world because, mm-hmm. you know, we are the byproduct of what our life has, has, has done for us and what it's made us. And comics are... You know, I slit if I if I if I cut my wrist, I, w- I think I would bleed four color ink, right? Because mm-hmm. that's that's how integral they are to me. And yeah. unlike most collectors, I never quit for a day, not for a day. Okay. I started in 1972, and I stayed forever. You that's know, amazing. and I never stopped collecting. And that's probably one reason why I'm sitting here in a kingdom of 58,000 comics. So. You know, it's it's, it's amazing. It's, like I said, it's, it's it's so ingrained, and I do have the collector's bug, and I have the gene in me. And like y'all, the art is everything. You know, I display the books, especially the horror covers. They mean so much. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Kevin, it means a lot to me to do the cover of the day because I'm spreading my love of these covers. You know, again, old not not so much the newer stuff, but the older stuff because mm-hmm. I want to. I don't want us to forget how great these creators have. Yeah, absolutely, you know, yeah. that, that that is so important. So yeah. that's why uh, that that's why doing that is is a, is a labor of love to pick those covers and to try to match them. And heck, the one we had today with the scorpion. Yeah, I substituted put a scorpion, not the yeah. not the scorpion character, but I you know I also gave two alternate covers that I hope people would look up that were great scorpion covers mm-hmm. of yeah. character scorpion. So, I mean, there, I had great options to throw yeah. out there. And so and he's just doing it. Well, I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm happy that you're happy with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But um, it, it's just, again, you cut my wrist, I'm going to bleed four color ink. So that's the, you know, that, that is, that is, that's, you know, that's it. I man. really, it's in, it's in my DNA. That's, that's great. Well, I, I really enjoy the um, the old old horror book covers because I was never a big mm-hmm. horror book guy. You know, I was always into the superheroes, you know, that genre, you know, mm-hmm. and I never really got into the horror book so much, but I love those old covers. I really yeah. do. Horror. They just oh, they blow my mind on the artwork. They really do. Sal, you know, I know we're going to look at, you know, when you all come back, we're going to look at, you know, these runs and all that, but I can't wait to open a box of ghosts and you look mm. at all the ghost covers you, you look at the house of mysteries i have the house yes. of secrets yep. because they, they are so cool and i am sure every one of us on this panel love horror movies right yes yep. do you have any and, um, sorry go ahead go ahead i was gonna say you go ahead, old phantom phantom books yeah. i have a few there were charlton books um i have a few of those but i have jim Aparo did the did that art for, on this for a while but i have the dc when dc had the rights to phantom i have all those yeah. Mm-hmm. So there were a couple different minis they did. Um, mm-hmm. Lee, um, Lee, the goat, he was the ghost that walks, and the fan yeah. was kind of cool. Yeah. That was well, the one Lee, character my dad Lee loved. Created. Let's yeah. let's uh, go ahead and see what Kevin's got to say. But before we okay. do Sorry. that, uh, no, no worries, and then we'll mm-hmm. we'll dive right into all of this. Before we do that, though, I would like to introduce you guys to my friend Keith. You remember that collection that I bought, Sal? Uh, that had yes. the firestorm and all that. Well, that's that man right down there. Uh, he's using my mom's uh, YouTube right now, mm. but, he, but he says Tim Keith here. And since we're talking about why we collect, this is his reason why he's collecting now. Mm. Uh, he, he just wants to say thank you for not only getting him back into comics, but also being a great friend. Love you, man. Keith, I love you too. You are super awesome, and it is a joy and a pleasure to see you when you come into the comic shop on Mondays and or Thursdays whenever mm-hmm. I'm working. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. Keith was out of comics for a long time. He mm-hmm. sold his collection to me, uh, which I have in these boxes back here. Uh, and because of that and because of just how much joy I showed when he was showing me all these things and all these books, uh, that was an inspiration for him to go back and start getting books and now he's getting new books he's got a poll list he's getting old books awesome he's doing all kinds of stuff so That's great keith yeah. it's amazing to to hear just a little snippet of that story and one mm. day we'll have you on keith so you can tell why, why you collected to begin with why you stopped and why you started again 
That's and great. send your variants to me. I would appreciate yeah, that. Thank you very much. They have to go through me first. It's, <laughs> it's like the open letter system in prison. I'll look at it, make sure that they're not contraband. But uh, Kevin, let us know, man. Why do you collect? And then we'll have the four-way panel. So I started, um, it started off with, it was kind of like the timing was perfect. My mom started picking me up comic books in order to get me, to encourage me to start to read. And around the same time, I found and stumbled upon and got an old book. It was, Tim, you'll appreciate this. It was the Dungeons and Dragons first edition of Deities and Demigods. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. And so I found both of them around the same time. And the both of them kind of reinforced my fascination with the other. But through learning mythology through that or starting with that and then going up and getting to the point where um in college i was studying um mythology and joseph campbell uh with the hero's journey and young with the archetypes brought me into a completely different and much deeper appreciation of comic books and stories and how they're written and why they're written and who the character is and what they're all about. Um, it made me just fascinated with stories. And comic books tell them in a way, in a medium that is unique. It's visual as any movie um, and it's depth of any book blended together in a visual medium that has no limits there's no budget restraints there's no uh like well we can't get this actor because it's perfect storm of storytelling and it goes back to the mythology of telling stories i've learned so much from comic books philosophy uh yep. poetry um just some incredible uh, learning and studying of life through the medium of comic books. Um, I pride myself on asking people, "What do you like to? Uh, what 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 what's your interest? What do you like to do when you're not working or whatever?" And somebody's like, "Oh, I'm into uh, I'm into cuisine." I'm like, "Read the comic chew." <laughs> 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 no, don't be. A, well, yeah, go ahead. That's, that's it. <laughs> right. like, whatever they're interested in, it's like, I got a comic that I think that you'll really appreciate I if like you're into beats. whatever it is that you're just, into. Just beats. They don't tell you anything. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> but But I, I, um, I, I share the passion of like, this is inherent in who I am. Um. Yeah. So I, I, I think that um, with comics, yeah, they made me who I am today. Um, and I, I'm extraordinarily appreciative of everybody that has had a hand in the foundation of making me who I am today. So thank you to all of the, you know, the, 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 the man, um, uh, the King, all of these guys, I, I, without them, I wouldn't be who I am today. That's right. Between the, the path that I lived and uh, life in general and then the comic book aspect of it, the two have made me the awesome dude that if you uh, pay for the $7 a month patron, you get to talk to me about this shit. So <laughs> That's a good plug. That's a good segue. There How much go. is the OnlyFans page? Uh, that is uh, $14.99 per hour. So the sad thing is that uh, Tim gets the 13 of that. Which... Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn. We are going the four-way panel here, Ooh. ladies and gentlemen. Okay, be before we before we get into the group discussion, I think uh, one thing needs to be said, uh, Uncle Gary, where, where you said that uh, you didn't feel like you belonged with uh the nerds uh, what my personal opinion just off of that alone i think you were in two worlds and not really a part of either one you're, or, you're absolutely right 
yeah, you didn't feel welcome in one or the other all the way. You yep. did what I did with music. And uh, like with comic books, that was one thing, right? With comics, the, the people that I hung out with, that was something that we all had in common. But when it came to music, I had friends that were very specific about things that they listened to. And if you listen to anything outside of that, you were ostracized or you're severely yes. made fun of or anything like that. One of I, I call them my closet bands and everybody had them. My closet band when I was a kid was the Guess Who, right? That was a band that I listened to by myself, alone in my room with my uncle. Right, Kevin? Why? Why would people get upset about that? Guess who? <clears throat> Not to some of the people that I hung out with. They listened to Metallica and Megadeth yeah. and Slayer and all these other things. And those bands are great, but I wanted to listen to No Sugar Tonight and American Woman and all these other great songs and things like that. And, and if I told people I listened to that, you listen to the Guess Who? It's time to break down Tim. And, and yeah. there was a, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I just want to say when I was younger, you either listened to metal or you listened to rap. Those yeah. were the two, nothing well, else. Well, the, the people I hung out with, you couldn't listen to rap either. That was a big no-no. And I listened to some of that. I grew up on NWA and, you know, Run DMC yeah. and, and yeah. things like that. DMC. Yeah, right? All that stuff. I loved listening to that stuff, but with some of the people I hung out with, you couldn't tell them you listened to it. And the one band I couldn't tell anybody I listened to uh, that I got caught singing the words to, believe uh -oh. it or not, was the Spice Girls. Um, <laughs> right? I, the, the whole first album. I have a younger sister. She loved the Spice Girls. I listened to the Spice Girls with her. And uh, the whole first album I knew front to back. Mm -hmm. all the words all that stuff and i'm sitting with a buddy of mine's uh, sister we mm -hmm. were having breakfast i spent the night at his house and we're sitting there in the first spice girls albums play and i'm sitting there singing along eating my breakfast yeah! she's looking at me she's like why how do you know this stuff i was like shit uh okay <laughs> <laughs> i actually like it it's really cool i listen to it with there's my nothing sister. wrong with, there's nothing wrong with that brother <clears throat> tim you hit the nail on the head that's exactly yeah. how i felt because i was i was i was part of two worlds but they didn't quite fit in both yeah. like i said you know we we are you were, clark shit, kent. Yeah. You were clark kent yeah I, I, you know what i'll, I'll take that you know it's good because when i played ball i was more of a loner too right i mean i i wasn't you know, I wasn't the rah-rah leader. I wasn't a follower. I was a guy that led by example, right? Yeah. You know, I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to hit you as hard as I freaking can. So, I mean, I, I had that. And then in the comic shop, you know, I was looked at differently because so many people that looked like me were mean and cruel to people that looked like yeah, them. them. And I was always a protector. I can't abide a bully. I can't stand a bully. And I would protect my friends that were, you know, a little nerdier and things like that. And I wouldn't allow harm to come to them. And uh, why are you defending them? I said, and I'd have to tell people, why are you attacking them? Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you're beating them up. What's that do to you? You don't, that doesn't enhance your rep. But I tell you what, if you and I want to throw down a little bit and you beat my ass, then that's something to brag about, baby. There you go. But you know, it's kind of funny that when you confront them and you offer that out, some people just don't want to take it. <laughs> no, they don't want you know, to take that big a bite of uh, yeah. humbling. Well, well, that's right, too. And they, they knew I had some anger issues. And, and look, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Being, being a bigger dude has benefited me. But, but you know, the things I went through in life made me hard where peer pressure was nothing to me, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you want me, you know, you trying to get me to do something, I'm just going to dig my heels in even more. I'm not going to do it. So peer pressure was nothing. I kind of walked my own path there but i i did i i got to the point where i was accepted more in the shops it became more mainstream and the other thing is when they found out i wasn't a tourist that i had some serious comic bona fide yeah. you know you know people were like god damn you know and then i mean where it is now i mean i, I am really well loved by my comic community you know so I, Not really, just, I know i love you man well i appreciate it i, lo I love you all too and, it, and it's been like that for years i mean i right? have Right. We're, we're, we're talking, you know, when I was in this place where I didn't quite belong, we're talking about late 70s, early 80s kind of yeah. thing, you know what I mean? And things that evolved. But, but yeah, it was that thing. And, you know, as far as the Spice Girls, look, my, 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 favorite, my favorite musician is, is John Mellencamp. 
I you love know, John Mellencamp. He yeah. sings to me the songs he writes. But mm-hmm. you know who else I love? I love me some Rich Springfield. Yep. I love Rich Springfield. Hell of a guitar player, also writes his songs and all that, but he's considered bubblegum pop. But I'm, I'm not going to shy away. I'll take that. Yeah. If you want to give me, you want to ding me for liking Rick Springfield, you know, that's okay. I, st- I love Rick Springfield. I saw him about five years ago, and the dude, wow. the dude's 60 and cut and could still shred on that guitar. So, I, if the Spice Girls went on tour, I would go see the Spice mm-hmm. Girls and I'd take my kids and be like, listen to this stuff, guys. This was awesome back in the. The late I'll, 90s. This was amazing. In the Spice Girls, but, but in yeah. the Spice Girls, if you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. Like, uh, tell me what you want. What you okay. really, okay. really, what you really, really want. Sold. Sold. <laughs> Look, hey, I want to. Let's go back to Mellencamp. Sometimes love don't feel like it should. But oh come on, God. baby. Make it hurt so good. <laughs> right. Jack and Diane. Nice. Um, yeah. And I got a Diane. Okay. There you go. Yeah. The, the, um, uh, Uncle Gary, have you ever seen the show um, Supernatural? You know what? I, I It's one of those shows I never got to. I appreciated it, and I know a lot about it, and I did see one episode. And I Rick, loved, loved, loved it. The Scooby-Doo episode. Rick, <laughs> Rick, Springfield, Rick Springfield was in one season, and he played wow. Lucifer. Mm-hmm. And he kicked ass in that role. Oh, he's a good. Yeah. He, he he is a very good actor. He was in yeah. a movie with Meryl Streep a few years ago called I think Frankie and the Flash or something like that. And he was really good. That he was also on a season of Californication, playing yeah. a version oh of God. himself, and it was awesome. We, we are, are getting off this, track here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry. Well, he had a girl bent over and and and, and it was singing. Uh, You're gonna love somebody. <laughs> oh my God. Well, let's go ahead and uh, shore this up with some final thoughts, gentlemen. So I guess the, the now we've told everybody why we collect. So, Sal, go ahead and start us off, and then we'll round us out. Uh, what advice would you give to somebody that's been in positions like all of us have where, like, there, there's aggression or there is pressure or there is anything like that where they are getting ridiculed or picked on because of comic books. What would you say to somebody like that? Wow, that's a that's a really tough question. I I would just say just be yourself. It, you know, I, coming from someone who got his ass beat a few times, you know, in fights, it's just it's gonna happen. You know, mm-hmm. I it didn't stop me from changing. It didn't change me who I was. I was still that guy. I was still that guy. You know, it never changed me. So be yourself, you know, do what, do what makes you happy. And in time, that stuff will fade away. Yeah, it will. So, mm-hmm. you know, just, you just have to weather the storm. Fair yeah. enough. Kevin, what about you? What would you say to somebody? That was getting picked on before mm-hmm. reading comic books. Yep. I would say, find out what this person that's picking on you is into. Find a comic that's relevant. Give it to him. And say before you pick, before you mess with me, read this. Give him a comic. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, as far as me, uh, conversations that I've had with my kids, uh, former uh, former stepkids, uh, my former stepdaughter. Uh, I remember uh, one time, uh, like going into gatekeeping and stuff like that. There was this boy that uh, she knew in high school. I believe it was. And he was always talking about Batman and all this knowledge of Batman and stuff like that. And she was always afraid to say things to him to, to correct him because the information that was coming out of his mouth was incredibly wrong. <laughs> and uh, I, I remember her and I sitting there one day and she's like, Tim, I just, everything he's saying is wrong. It's not right, but I know that it's right. I was like, well, how do you know it's right? And she's like, well, because all the stuff you talk about and all the books that you have and the books that I've read, I was like, well, then tell him. Just don't be afraid. Just let him know. Sometimes you got to stand up for yourself and sometimes you got to put your best foot forward and be like, um, actually, what you're <laughs> saying is incorrect. Batman actually appeared in this issue or what you're saying about Harley Quinn is factually wrong. She actually did this. If you know it and you're confident about it, let people know, but don't be a jerk, right? Because that's mm-hmm. what they've done to us. 
We don't want to do the same thing to them. That's what I would do. Gary, mm -hmm. finish us off, man. What would you say to somebody like that? I'd say, come stand behind me. I got your back. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Now, now, um, I'll, tell, I'll tell you a, a funny story, and then I want to tell you something you know, about the whole thing. My, my daughter, um, my, my oldest daughter, she's like 33 now. She was, um, she was in an art class, and she had another girl that they, they weren't close, but they were kind of rivals because they were the best artists in class. And at some point, my daughter... But, you know, they, 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 they didn't, you know, they didn't interact a whole lot, but um, she had, she had seen my daughter and she had seen me before. Mm -hmm. And this boy in the class that was a big, big asshole was, had heard my, my daughter talking about that her dad has comics and likes comics. And she's like, hi, your dad's a comic nerd, blah, blah, blah. He's a little nerd, blah, blah, blah. And this other girl leans across the table to him and says, he will break you. <laughs> <laughs> That was, nice. That Have you seen him? Her dad. <laughs> he will break you. And the guy oh. just looked. And so it was just awesome. But you know what? What I want to reiterate: why I love comics so much, and, and and tell people, yeah, you know, stand up to a bully. You know, stand up to a bully. You know, I'm not saying be aggressive. I'm not saying throw the first punch, but stand your ground. Stand Damn your right. ground. And let them know that they're not going to intimidate you. They're not going to scare you. And like what you want. You know what? We make fun of bronies, but if you're a brony and that's what you like, that's what you like. That's what you like. I got, I got, you know, that's, you know. They kind of bring it on themselves, though. Well, they do. They do. But be true to what you like, you know. That's true, yeah. Be influenced. Don't, don't read something because somebody else does it. But if you really want to know, I, I, I'm a fountain of knowledge. I would love to. You know, I showed I showed the fellows the prescription pads I had that I would write comic <laughs> prescriptions on books they should read last year. But what we got to remember about comics these these are our modern pantheon of gods. Yes, gods. yes. These stories used to be told around campfires about the you know the great feats of, of strength and of magic and yep. heroes and villains and human frailty. And failings the and magic, triumph, all of that's that. right. Yeah, that's right. So the this this was the modern fireside storytelling the that we have it. now. Yeah. I mean, TV is the same. You know, it's the same kind of thing. But these comics, that's how I view it. This this is our medium. This is this is you know our forebearer bearers that were telling these great stories of Zeus yeah. and Apollo and yeah. Hera and Diana and Nike and all these, you know, great gods and goddesses and Pluto. And, you know, this is the, this is what we are loving so much. It is something that has been passed down through humanity for many, many centuries. This and is our social is, commentary. That's, yes. that's how we learn about things. When we were kids, this is how we learned about societal issues yeah. that, people wouldn't talk to us about or wouldn't tell us about this That's is where true. we learned about characters <laughs> that felt the same way we did Sal, with spider-man mm -hmm. uh, they they were alone they were in one world uh, uncle gary they were part of one world and part yep. of another and part of and accepted in neither and i mean all of that stuff and and kevin you know with with the rich history of mythology and all of yep. that and all of that stuff we all love and we all can relate to and it just builds a burning passion mm -hmm. for creativity and imagination and the ability to sometimes suspend disbelief and dive into a book about spider-man fighting a six-armed sentinel with a guy that can fly at the speed of light and how in the hell is Spider-Man going to beat that guy, right? What's going to happen? I need to know in 28 pages with that. Yeah. <laughs> so. But not that particular issue because it's sealed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not that one. I've got another <laughs> copy over here, so there's that. <clears throat> but, oh, we, we learned about life through these. Now, yes. Yes. comics yes. like what you had just now, that comic you just had now, was pure fun and adrenaline and escapism, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Have, I'm going to ask you fellas. Have you fellas read the Green Lantern Run 
um, Green Lantern, Green Arrow by Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams, the hard traveling heroes. Mm -hmm. have, yes. have you all read, Sal, you've read it, right? Have you read the yep. entire run? Yes. Kevin, have you? Like I said, that, that follows uh, Joseph Campbell's uh, the, G, the Hero's <laughs> Journey to a T. That's the embodiment well, of that. Right well, there. so these books, there were 13 issues per, that mm -hmm. that appeared from, from, from 76 to 89, and 80, 88 was a giant size. Mm -hmm. We dealt with drug addiction. We dealt mm -hmm. with racism. We dealt yeah. with union rights. We dealt with environmental issues. We dealt mm -hmm. with Native American rights. The weak issues in that run were the couple of issues that dealt with, uh, there was a Sinestro issue with the supervillains. It just didn't work. These were so on point mm -hmm. in the drug issues where Speedy's a junkie. When mm -hmm. Green Arrow sees Speedy shooting up and sees he's a junkie, what does he do to him? Anybody remember? Beats I've the crap out of him. Yes. Yeah. He hits him. He <laughs> hits him. And can't believe that a war to his would do that. And as mm -hmm. he walks out the door in his mind, he's absolving himself of blame, saying, it's nothing I did to him. I don't yeah. know why he felt like that. I mean, I know I haven't been around and I've been doing this and that, but I brought him up better than that. Yeah. How freaking true to life is that? Yeah. yeah. How true right. to life it's is that? It's really written because he, you, with comic books, it would be like, we need to get well, you help. But it, well, it's a lot more realistic, like, well, this, it, it was, reaction. This, was 19, this was 1970 and the series got canceled and the mm. final issues of it had to actually appear as the backup in the flash. Mm. And it, it was, there were pretty potent issues because green arrow who's got an injury is hurt. He misshoots and he hits a guy and kills him. <laughs> and so the arrow goes to a monastery and is trying to clean his soul. And all. I mean, these are deep, deep issues. So yeah. comics, we get the adrenaline rush. Yes. But comics also have some deep social commentary that they tell us. So mm -hmm. it, it, there's there's so much, you know, you know. I, I I love to educate people in a nice way that think they're just funny books. And I said, mm -hmm. no, they're not all funny yeah. books. It's like movies. There are movies for kids. There are movies yep. for adults. There are summer movies. There are in-depth, character-driven movies. Mm -hmm. And there, there's a comic out there for everybody. Yes. yes. Yeah. There is a comic for yeah. everybody. But it's just, this is such a medium that I am so passionate about. And I love so much. And mm -hmm. that's part of why I really appreciate you all taking me on. Because it just gives me another platform. Another outlet. And yeah. Another outlet. Because I that's hold true. report at Comic Logic every Wednesday. We have our other shows. And I, I'm kind of a ambassador emeritus you know with the comic community around here right mm -hmm. but it, it, it's just you know i just want to get it out and let everybody know how wonderful this you know this medium is and and, and my god look how things have changed in 20 years the <laughs> yeah. culture has changed we're, we're the yep. you know comic guys are the cool kids now right yeah mm -hmm. if you're yeah, in the yeah. comics you're one of the cool kids so it, but it, it's just i love this medium and i love to talk with like-minded individuals like y'all so again it's an honor to be a part of um what y'all are doing and i and i do appreciate y'all i that. i would yeah. i would i would i would say that the honor was ours man i appreciate yeah. that well yeah. i i think that's a perfect place to put this topic to bed uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard four wonderful stories uh, from four very unique individuals on why we collect, and you've heard some deep and personal things, but that's only scratching the surface. We're going to revisit this topic of conversation with other members of the Codex Station, so that way we can get their input as well as to why they collect comic books. So stick around for that in the future. Before we get out of here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, all three of you guys, I want to thank you so much for all the work that you guys do. Gary, I know you're the new kid on the block right now, but you have done so much already behind thank the you. scenes that's been mm -hmm. going on uh sal and kevin you guys are troopers to the end i mean it, it this not stormtroopers though right uh <laughs> no uh, more like red shirt. You, yeah mm -hmm. more like red shirt star trek uh in <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, oh, <laughs> we gotta go on an away team fair. gentlemen uh <laughs> i'm in a blue shirt gary's in a gold fair. shirt looks like you guys are wearing red shirts today <laughs> hey i take it off go. let's go it's after dark right let's go. oh my god <laughs> 
But it, you, you can talk you to that creature. He seems friendly. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, the entire team, right? Jamie and Sonny, mm-hmm. uh, if they would have never sat down and Jamie would have never made the call and said, hey, Sonny, I want to do this. We wouldn't be here doing this right now. Uh, so so the ultimate thanks goes to Jamie and, and yes. then to Sonny and you know everybody else guys where gary this is our outlet and and it's a pleasure to have you be a part of this and it's a pleasure to have you sit here every night with us yeah. from now on because you can't leave that the contract says you're in it to win it i'm and in it baby all the way in. Going. In. that's right if you're in you're in yeah that's yeah. right y'all i'll jump in the ring with y'all anytime baby done uh time for a tag in let's do it Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and get out of here before tears start dropping and everybody starts <laughs> hugging. Uh, b- if, before that, though, uh, you can go to the codexstation.com for all your codex needs. That's where you can find everybody. Uh, you can meet the team, uh, get some merch, and so much more. Also, on the codexstation.com, you can find all our socials links. And all you got to do is type in at the Codex Station on your favorite one. Make sure to hit the like, share, subscribe, and follow. Uh, so that way you don't miss more awesome content like this all the time, every time. Don't forget that neat little QR code right there. That is our Patreon. Uh, super awesome, exclusive content only for Patreon members. Uh, for the price, Yeah, there you go. There you go. For the price of a cup of coffee, guys, if you so please. And it would definitely help us out all the more. Sal. When you, we are not doing codex stuff with your beautiful slabs in the background, where can people find you? All right. You can always find me on YouTube under Sal's Comic Corner and Instagram as the Slab Guy 77. Wonderful. And Kevin, you are on Facebook doing Facebook things, catering to uh, old people. What I am. Uh, I created there? a group over on Facebook, Comic, Comic Character of the Day, where I got my family here all sucked up into it too. And uh, we'd love to have you come over and check us out. We create, we put up a different character every day. We do all sorts of other goodies and nerdy news and pictures and cool stuff. Uh, you dropped out. Yeah, yeah that, that threw me out there for a minute. Anyway, nope, keep going. Okay. Um, and uh, we'd love to have you come over and and become part of our 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 cult that we're starting here at the Codex Station. One of us. Comic character One of, of the us. day. <laughs> there you go. And ladies and gentlemen, Uncle Gary dropped out uh, probably with some computer issues, but don't worry. You can find him on Facebook right there, forward slash ye grumpier all apostrophe nerds uh, for his podcast that he does with two other co-owners of mm-hmm. Comic Logic. And that is the only comic book company in Loudoun County in Ashburn, Virginia. Is that right, Sal? Am I saying that? That is correct. correct. Perfect. Look at that. That's on the fly, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure that you go to facebook.com forward slash ye grumpier old apostrophe nerds. So you can listen to him on the second and third Thursdays of every month where they sit down and talk about awesome stuff and it's a great banter back and forth and also if you are in ashburn virginia make sure to head over to the store that he co-owns and that is comic logic it's a great right. store i was in it and it's very well very well done wonderful and uh the on the spot for that is going to be coming out here pretty soon uh we are going to go fishing for uncle gary i hope he's out there because i am ready to reel him back in but ladies and gentlemen once again my name is tim this guy is sal the slab guy and down below is archduke kevy and over there in the astral plane uh fighting nice. uh heralds of galactus and uh dr strange knockoffs is uncle gary we will see you guys next time see you